Louis Vuitton recently presented their Fall 24 menswear collection, directed by Pharrell. I don't want to say it was designed by Pharrell, because he said before that he doesn't consider himself to be a designer. He thinks of himself as a creative director. And to me, that means he's a curator of taste, style, music, and art. Someone who can look at many different references across several mediums and bring them together to create a compelling, energetic, and magnetic experience. In this case, the Fall 24 menswear collection, which left an impact on me, but also raised a lot of questions in my mind about cultural appreciation and the ethics of a multi-billion dollar luxury goods company using a historically oppressed group, Native Americans, to profit off of, but presenting it in a way that lifts that group up through visibility, appreciation, and sharing their art and people with the world. It's left me very conflicted, but let's take a look at the collection and then discuss it. As an American-born designer, Pharrell is certainly bringing American themes to Louis Vuitton, much like his predecessor, Virgil Abloh. This collection was an unrestrained artistic interpretation and reimagination of the American West. Traditionally, in American media, we see the Wild West as a predominantly white setting with strictly white cowboys, and the Native Americans in those westerns were clearly differentiated and othered through their dress and customs, and were often seen at odds with the cowboys. But following the show, Pharrell stated, according to Vogue, quote, when you see cowboys portrayed, you only see a few versions. You never really get to see what some of the original cowboys looked like. They looked like us. They looked like me. They looked black. They looked Native American. So the media we've been presented all our lives hasn't been exactly truthful in its portrayal of the American Wild West. I know, what a shocker. But Pharrell's response to this is to present a Western Americana Vaquero collection with a cast of diverse models, including members of Native tribes. And I feel like many designers would stop there and call it good. Often, brands are praised when their shows feature any amount of diversity, and they're lauded as an inclusive company or designer. But Pharrell didn't just stop there. And something I really respect him for is his genuine appreciation for the people who inspire him and the people who make his vision into a reality. We see it at the end of his shows, when the atelier staff come out onto the runway and get a round of applause. Most creative directors walk on stage for five seconds, wave, then walk back in like they couldn't be bothered to show their face to the people who are there supporting them, and appreciate the staff who worked their butts off to make these shows come to life. There's this archetype of the mysterious, elusive creative director that Pharrell just isn't playing into. And I think that genuine kindness that he's displaying and the love is what this industry really needs more of. Pharrell walks around after the show, takes a bow with his models and workers, hugs his family, and acknowledges the audience. His behavior is energetic, magnetic, and you can tell that he is genuinely proud of where he is, the collection they presented, and all of the hard work from so many people who came together to make it a reality. And with this collection, he didn't just look at Western motifs, native embroideries, and art to inspire the pieces presented, just to then be recreated and reinterpreted in a French atelier with French workers. He actually involved native artisans in the creation and presentation of this work. The floral embroideries and paintings done across the collection on garments and accessories were done in collaboration with artists from the Dakota and Lakota nations. The live music was performed by musicians from those nations as well. This collection was a collaborative effort between Pharrell, Louis Vuitton, and native artists. It looked back at Western heritage and gave us something very tangible and fun, and is certainly going to influence upcoming trends. We saw a lot of classic tailoring, both single and double-breasted blazers and coats, which made me think of how the American West saw an influx of immigration during the gold rush and served as a mixing pot of fashion and culture. There were bright turquoise buttons, bolo ties, and bags in a range of eye-catching colorways. Beautiful vintage denim match sets complete with boot-cut jeans and ruffled shirting or fitted blazers adorned by elevated floral embroideries. Jacquard's expertly painted fabric and lace featuring western scenery and rodeo cowboys. Chaps and carpenter pants with distressed 
decorative paneling and appliques. And I really loved the bootcut suede pants finished with that oil slick coating. And so many of these looks merged authenticity with luxury past and present. There were a few more modern looks as well, featuring tracksuits, sequined pajama sets, and very intense neon embroidery reminiscent of classic Las Vegas signage, but I don't think those detracted from the overall collection. Some of my favorite looks were those featuring graphic native embroideries that told a story and are so evident in their historical and cultural meaning, while also being so visually striking. I think so much of modern runway fashion is generally unwearable, or looks like the pieces would be wearing you. Which is why I think I liked this collection so much, because for the most part, these are wearable looks, rooted in historical dress, while still having that Louis Vuitton flair. They're transporting us to a time of tangibility with this collection, to garments that have already withstood the test of time. Vintage denim, blazers, collarless jackets Pharrell has done in previous collections, parable workwear pieces, and beautiful, statement accessories. Some of these looks are a bit too western to wear as an everyday outfit, but they can mostly be pared down with other pieces in your wardrobe. The theme is strong and sometimes bordering on costume, but still wearable, very commercial, and will be highly appealing to the Louis Vuitton customer. The standard attention to detail, the quality, and the luxury aspects are all very much present throughout this collection. The savoir-faire, the artisanal craftsmanship, is unmatched. These pieces aren't for the cowboy out there who's getting dirty, wrangling bulls, and winning duels at dawn. This is for the Louis Vuitton customer, who has probably only seen a bull on the side of a Red Bull can. If someone showed up to a ranch in these outfits, they'd be bullied back into their Lamborghini Urus. Which leads me to my next point, the intersection of authenticity and fantasy. Because while I love the influences which brought this collection together, the execution of it the style and taste and music to create this energizing Western atmosphere. When does it become role-playing? Because luxury clothing, and especially luxury runway shows, they sell a fantasy. You can be who you want, you can do what you want. If you wear our clothing, then the world is yours. It's art, but it's heavily commercialized art. But there's a void, a degree or many degrees of separation between the reality of the history of the American Wild West and the romanticized, luxurious version that Louis Vuitton is presenting here. The Wild West was a harsh and cruel time of violence, racism, hunger, frontier justice, and greed. People wore their Levi's and Wranglers to the bare threads because they couldn't afford to buy a new pair of jeans. We were stealing land and oil and money from native people, forcing populations into poverty through intimidation and violence and systemic oppression. I did watch Killers of the Flower Moon. Now I might not be an expert, but the reality of this collection is that while I think it does a great job of lifting up native voices and celebrating native culture through collaborative art and music, it doesn't address the reality and the gravity of how we got here in the first place. It's very romanticized, and it really sells that fantasy that luxury loves to sell. And I can't speak on behalf of native people, I'm literally just a white guy. So I don't have the full story, and my opinions may be completely off base and incorrect here. But I'm also assuming that the native artisans and musicians fully agreed to collaborating with Louis Vuitton for this collection. And there's no confusion that Louis Vuitton is a for-profit luxury goods brand. They aren't a philanthropic organization. This collection was art that celebrated Western and native culture and did so beautifully. But unfortunately, when I researched how Louis Vuitton is giving back to the Dakota and Lakota nations after collaborating with their artisans for this collection, I found nothing. And please, if they are giving back to native communities, and I just didn't see it, let me know. But according to the National Community Reinvestment Coalition, the 2018 U.S. Census reported that Native Americans have the highest poverty rate among all minority groups at 25.4%, while the poverty rate for the white population, for reference, had an 8.1% national poverty rate during the same time period. For the most part, I'm willing to bet that while this collection is a celebration of Native culture, it won't be accessible to Native people. But that's luxury. That's Louis Vuitton. 
it isn't accessible to the majority of people in general. So therefore, is cultural appreciation even genuine in the context and execution of this collection? When native artisans and musicians help to realize these garments and the entire show, just to profit one of the richest families in the world, the Arnaud's, who haven't to my knowledge stated that they're going to use these profits to reinvest in native communities and native arts. But that's luxury, right? Is cultural appreciation even possible in luxury fashion? Or is it all a fantasy? A show? And my argument isn't against a luxury fashion. And I really enjoy this collection, and I think Pharrell did a fantastic job. But if Louis Vuitton is going to all this effort to use native artisans, celebrate native culture and art, the show should have gone further to tell a meaningful story and narrative of how we got here. I would have liked to hear native voices speaking on this collaboration and how Louis Vuitton is continuing their relationship with the Dakota and Lakota nations. And when I say Pharrell could have gone further to tell this story, I don't think this collection needs to be as dark as other collections rooted in a tragic history, such as Alexander McQueen's 1995 collection, which dramatically and uncomfortably showed the history of England's attempt to remove the Scottish Highland communities through violence, which became one of McQueen's most controversial and darkest collections. But Pharrell could have found a better compromise between genuine representation of the American West and modern luxury, applicable to the Louis Vuitton customer. Because if next season there's no mention or acknowledgement or continuation of this relationship, then was this cultural appreciation genuine, or was it a seasonal gimmick to influence trend? Those are my thoughts on this collection, but what did you think? Let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this critique, please like and subscribe, and as always, thank you for watching.